no demon is safe in this house. That the spirit of suicide is not safe. The spirit of depression is not safe. The spirit of fear is not safe. That there is no generational curse that's going to survive in this atmosphere. That there is no principality that is going to survive in this atmosphere. That today is a terrible service for the kingdom of darkness that every demonic spirit every demonic power every slithering monitoring demon is being driven out in Jesus name I wonder if I have any violent believers see the Bible says that from the days of John the Baptist until now that the kingdom of God is suffering violence and violent men lay hold of it I came to tell you that God is not looking for mamsy pamsy watered down preachers God is looking for some spiritual snipers for some spiritual warriors for some crazy believers for some people that got cast out of their church for casting demons out of people I wonder if I have anybody that knows what it's like to be fired for being on fire I wonder if there's anybody that says you don't judge my worship don't judge my shout don't judge my praise there's a reason why I shout this way there's a reason why I praise this way there's a reason why I'm desperate the way that I'm desperate if you've seen what my eyes have seen you'd praise the way that I praise if you've seen the hell that God brought me out of there's a reason why I'm allowed there's a reason why I can't sit down there's a reason why there's a fire in my bones now I'm not saying you have to praise this way just don't judge people that do don't judge my shout don't judge my praise. Friend, I got up at 1.30 in the morning the other night. I don't know what day was it yesterday. And I didn't fly all this way to join a country club. I didn't fly all this way for a Chuck E. Cheese church. I didn't fly all this way to preach to a funeral. I came all this way because I believe that there is a remnant. I believe that there is a shout and there is a roar. That there is a lion on the inside of you that's getting ready to wake up this morning that there's a praise on the inside of you I believe for complete deliverance some have said that today is the witch's day that today is the warlock's day but I came to declare to every principality that this is the day that the Lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it and for the devil's birthday we're giving him a black eye we are going to tax the devil what does it mean to tax the kingdom of darkness we're here to audit the kingdom of darkness for too long nobody has taxed the enemy everybody has allowed the enemy to have free reign in the body of Christ so many have allowed the enemy to do what he wants in the church and the American pastor is a hireling and not a watchman the Bible says that a hireling doesn't care about the sheep all they care about is the money the finances the family teach you how to build your career and your business but a true pastor and a true watchman is not a hireling he's going to confront the forces of darkness he's going to confront real loud on the side speakers the plans of the enemy so we are not here to tell you that you are okay where you're at we are here to let you know that there is another level in God that you have to get tired of the enemy holding you back from praise you have to get tired of the enemy stopping you. Let me ask you this question because many of us in this room do not evangelize. Many of us, and y'all are going to get quiet right here. Y'all are like, oh, praise the Lord. Okay, now I'm not going to shout. 
Many of us in this room do not read our Bibles on a daily basis. Many of us in this room, if we remove Sunday morning, we would have no Christianity. The only time that we're Christian is for an hour and a half where a pastor babysits us on Sunday morning and changes our diaper and caters to our needs and shoves coffee and donuts in our mouth but never drives demons out of us. And we come to the house of God and we convince ourselves we are believers. And the problem with the church is we love Jesus. Jesus, but we don't love the things that Jesus does and so we have a God that we've made in our own image a God that doesn't heal the sick a God that doesn't drive out demons a God that doesn't challenge us in our compromise a God that doesn't convict us when we're out watching the squid game come on a God that doesn't bring us to that next level of consecration and we're like we love the Lord but we don't do the things the Lord says to do because we, we have to get over Jesus loves you. We already know Jesus loves the sinner. Jesus loves the prostitute. We already know the unconditional love of God. Let me tell you the terrifying thing about the unconditional love of God. That God will love you and then one second later throw you into hell. The Bible says do not fear men. Do not fear the Roman soldiers that were torturing Christians for fun. But Jesus said fear the Father that could destroy both body and and soul in hell there is a second death for the unbeliever and we're preaching God loves you God loves you God loves you and the question of the hour is doesn't God love us we all know he does but do we reciprocate the love back to God how now what does this have to do with deliverance I'm going to show you how do I prove that I love God I don't prove my love for God by posting on Facebook I don't prove my love for God by posting a verse on Instagram at my favorite coffee shop I don't prove my love for God by watching Christian TikTok videos. The way that I can prove that I love God is by my actions. This is how I prove it, that there has to be work. The Bible says to work hard. I know all of you grace people, all of you that just want to soak in the glory are not going to like this, but the Bible says work hard to prove that you're among those that God has called and chosen. In other words, Christianity is not for those that are lazy. Christianity it's not for those that want to sit around. Oh, pastor, feed me. Only babies need someone to feed them. But I believe somebody is growing up in God. I believe somebody is getting ready to go to the next level and say, I don't just want to go week to week on life support, but I want the fire of God on the inside of me. I want to shake hell. I want to drive out demons. I want to lay hands. Come on, I didn't come to preach to the lukewarm. I want to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. I want to do the works that Jesus did and even greater. But our climax of our Christian life is I invited someone to church on Sunday. You, oh, Pastor Mike, they're not going to like this. You invited me, so by the way, just disclaimer, y'all invited me, so I'm going to preach how I, felt, how I felt to preach it. There is not one verse in the Bible where Jesus said invite people to church. There's not one place in Scripture. Yet think about this. The climax of the Christian life is inviting someone to church, and now that we've invited, oh, I'm an evangelist. I'm an evangelist because I invited 10 people to church on Sunday. An evangelist doesn't invite people to the church. An evangelist brings the church to the people. And and what New York needs is not another beautiful mega church, and I'm glad we have one here. What New York needs is people that are on fire, that are walking in the presence and the power of God, that are special forces, that are going to go out and infiltrate the darkness. That oh, come on, I wish I had somebody that says I'm taking territory in Jesus' name. I'm taking back everything. Am I at the right place? Am I at First Anthony or? V1 Church. I'm taking back territory from the kingdom of God. I am advancing. This is what advancing means. I'm going to take land. I'm going to take territory. I'm going to take my marriage back. Come on, help me preach this morning, Holy Ghost. I'm going to take my family back. I'm going to take my finances back. Devil, you've been messing with my mind too long. It's time to take my mind back today. It's time to take my, my peace back today. Everything the devil stole, I'm taxing him this morning. Every demon that stole from me, you will pay 
pay me back and then some. In Jesus' name, I'm not going to cater to my demons. I'm not going to tolerate my demons. I'm not going to be comfortable with my demons. I'm going to make my spiritual house an uncomfortable place for demons. That's why I love preaching this way. Because it's not making you uncomfortable. It's making your demons uncomfortable. Because your demons, they don't mind coming to church. Especially the dead churches a lot of you go to where no one ever confronts them. In fact, the devil's the one bring you into the church because he knows if he can keep you on the fringes of a religious system, here's what happens. When someone tries to get you to be radical, you say, I'm already a Christian. Do you know some of the most lost people in the world are not outside the church but in the church? Because they have a form of godliness, but they deny the very power that can make them like God. And so if someone comes up to you, the grocery store and tries to witness to you and you go i'm already a christian do you know the danger of this morning the most dangerous place you could be is not an atheist not a drug addict not a witch not a warlock is a lukewarm believer that thinks you have enough of god that says i'm good where i'm at and i'm telling you i'm telling you right now that there's no one safe in this room that there's no one in this room that's arrived there's no one in this room that says oh i don't need this this message isn't for me but every single one of us god is saying this morning that i'm going to pour out a fresh conviction i'm going to pour out the fear of the Lord. But let me not even say the fear, the terror of the Lord. Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade men. Here, here's the terror of the Lord. I stand before God on judgment day and God goes, who are you? And I'm like, I'm, I'm a demon slayer. I mean, you haven't seen podcasts. We're at episode 940 at this point, And you haven't seen my YouTube channel and my all my subscribers. 10 million, praise the Lord, I'm speaking prophesied. And Lord, and God says you had 10 million subscribers. And you had all these followers and all these downloads on Spotify. And all these things that men call success. And God can care less about all of our little metrics and gizmos and gadgets and trinkets. And God says, Isaiah Saldivar. Friend, I live and I feel the fear of the Lord this morning. That's why I'm pivoting right now, but I live in the fear of the Lord. I walk in the fear of the Lord. I told Pastor Mike driving yesterday, I said, bro, and I'm going to scare a lot of you. If you're older, then just, then just be scared like I'm scared. I said, Pastor Mike, yesterday in the car, I said, I'm 30 years old, bro, but I feel like I'm already at the end of my life. I feel like I don't have time. I was thinking about it. I was going, God, I got to reach people for you. I have like no life left. And God's like, I say, you're 30, relax. But I'm like, no, there's an urgency in me because every day that passes by that I'm wasting my life, scrolling my life away, bowing down to the God of Apple and Android. I'm losing time in God's economy. I'm losing valuable time. Friend, you have one opportunity to drive demons out of people. You have one life to evangelize. You have one life to lay hands on the sick. And so many of us are throwing our life in the trash can of culture and social media and not doing what God has called us to do. So would you rather somebody fly from California that weighs 130 pounds that would tell you that you aren't doing what God has called you to do or would you rather God do it on judgment day? Here's the beauty, Pastor Mike. I'm going to tell you this and guess what? You're going to drive home and you're going to have the silent drive with your wife. Come on, y'all know what the silent drive is? Like, honey, everything he's been preaching is what we've been doing. Everything we've been watching is what he preached. Everything he's been saying, we're not doing. We're not doing what God. I, I pray that you would walk out of this place and you would recognize that there's error in your life. I pray that you would have such a burden that you would wrestle all night long tonight, realizing that why are witches and warlocks spending eight hours a day astral projecting and praying, and we can't even get you to a Wednesday night, 45 minute prayer gathering? Why is it the church has the old only live in God and it's like pulling teeth to get the body of Christ to do something I'm gonna tell you why because for so long we've allowed demonic spirits to tell us how we're supposed to have church instead of letting the Holy Spirit cast out and drive out every demonic spirit because what do you okay if it's not a demon what's stopping you from witnessing What's stopping you from opening up your Bible? It's not a demon. I don't have demons. I'm a Christian, brother. Keep telling yourself that, and you can live with your 15 demons and have names for every single one. It's not a demon. It's just anxiety. All you're doing is naming your demon. 
It is anxiety, a spirit of anxiety. Oh, it's not, a, I'm a pastor, I don't have a demon. Most, trust me, most pastors have demons. It's not depression, it's a spirit of depression. It's not fear, it's a spirit of fear. I don't know why, brother, I just constantly have thoughts of driving my car off the road. That's called a spirit of suicide, a spirit of murder. And I know we don't say this behind the pulpit, but Jesus said, for this reason I was manifested. John said, 1 John 3, 8. The Son of May, God was manifest to destroy the works of of darkness Jesus did not come so you could be a part of a country club on Sunday morning Jesus came to destroy every demonic power in your life I need somebody to help me preach in this place he came to liberate you he came to free you so that in your freedom you could deliver other people so you get delivered this morning and you go this works I'm going to do deliverance on my family. I'm going to do deliverance on my friends. I'm going to do deliverance on my coworkers. What is stopping us from opening up our Bible? What is stopping us from, from praying? What is stopping us from fasting? What is stopping us from driving out demons? What is stopping us? Jesus said that you are the light of the world, that the city, a city set up on a hill gives light for everybody. That why are you putting a basket over your life? You have the same spirit that raised Christ is living on the inside of you. And I'm pleading with us this morning to stop calling ourselves Christians stop stop calling yourself a Christian when you're not being a Christian is not praying a prayer repeating after an evangelist you're like I came to mass deliverance I didn't know I was gonna get saved y'all are gonna get saved and delivered this morning being a Christian is when you do the works that Jesus did and people see you do the works that Jesus did that's why the Bible says let your works I know y'all don't hear this because you li- I'm not gonna say who but you listen to way too many grace preachers but it says let your works shine before men let your works not God's works let your works shine before men so that they may see the works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. If your life doesn't bring glory to God, it's because there's no works and there's no reason for people to glorify God because there's no works. But when you do the works that Jesus did, this is what I'm trying to tell you. When you do the works that Jesus did, it gives the people around you an opportunity to worship God and to praise God. But when you're a lazy Sunday morning pew warmer that's just just wasting space as Jesus said about the plant in the book of Luke thir- chapter 13 Jesus says I'm gonna cut you off because all you're doing is taking up space but you're not producing anything and the hour that we live in we don't need a bunch of fruit trees producing nothing we need the sons and the daughters of God to engage in the battle I hear the Lord saying it's time to get off can y'all hear me this morning it's time to get off the sidelines and it's time to get on the field it's time to put down the cheerleading pom-poms and it's time to go to battle there is not enough time and there is so much work to do for God every single one of you are called to cast out demons I just don't know if I have the gift there is no gift I'm just going to give you a misconception here. There's no such thing as the gift of deliverance. Oh, I'm just waiting. Maybe the Lord's going to give me a vision that I'm called. No, you don't need a vision. You don't need a dream. You don't need a feather. You don't need a gold dust. You don't need to levitate. You don't need a prophetic word. You don't need a preacher or a pastor to anoint you. You don't need a calling. You don't need a mandate. You don't need us to line you up and push you down and pour oil on you like you're some chicken at Popeye's. All you need is to understand that every single, listen to me this morning, every single believer is called to drive out demons. Now, if you don't feel it's your calling, it's because you're not a believer. Because you could be a Christian and not a believer. And let me, I'm trying to be nice. I want to get invited back, but it is what it is. It's like, oh, we're going to see if we can get you on the schedule for 2024. Go, oh yeah, they didn't like the message. There's a lot of Christians, but in whose eyes? We're like, I'm a Christian. Why? Why are we, why is Isaiah Saldivar a Christian? Because I say I'm a Christian, because I prayed a prayer, because I said a prayer and now my life didn't change. My, I have no fire, I have no passion for God, I have no desire, I don't do anything, I'm just now a believer. And this is what was happening with the disciples. They were walking around like, look, we're Christians, look, we, God loves us, God loves us. And Jesus turns around to the disciples and says, if you love me, obey my commandments. Now Jesus was not talking about only the commandments in Scripture 
nature, to live holy, to live righteous, to walk the narrow road. But Jesus talking about the commandments, obey my commandments, was him referencing the things he commanded them to do. Are y'all catching this? He said, I'm going to tell you to go preach. I'm going to send you out in Matthew chapter 10 to go cast out devils and heal the sick. And you can't be cessationist. You can't be Baptist. You're not allowed to say, well, we don't believe in that Jesus. Every single one of you, you don't get to say, oh, I'm just a drummer. I don't need to cast out. Oh, I'm just a worship leader. From your gifting is not your identity. Your service does not exclude you from the call of God. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher, a pastor, a deacon, or a demon. You've been called and you've been anointed to do the works. And Jesus said, I've commanded you. It wasn't optional. And too many of us have turned the word of God into the opinion of God. Friend, if it is in the word, if it is in the word of God, it's not God suggesting you to do it. It wasn't like, uh, go cast out demons, disciples. And then they're like, oh, we, we, okay, I guess we can. I mean, we don't really, we don't, I don't really, I'm not really into it. It's kind of loud. It's kind of radical. It's kind of scary. And it spooks me out. And you know, I don't really like doing deliverance. He's like, you don't have a choice. Now, if you don't want to do it, don't call yourself a Christian. You don't have, you're not, you don't have to follow me. There's one thing Jesus never did that we always do as evangelists is he never forced people to follow him. People say, why don't you do altar calls and try to get as many people saved as possible? Because I'm not going to beg anyone to do what Jesus never begged anyone to do. In fact, people would come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. And Jesus was like, uh, I could tell there's idols in your life. I could tell you're not ready to give up your eight hours a day on TikTok. I could tell you're not ready to give up your Hulu addiction, your Netflix addiction, your Instagram. And you know, that job that you'll work 14 hours a day, because none of us have a problem bowing down and worshiping mammon, but God forbid we worship Yahweh. He's like, yeah, that job, I could already tell before you even want to follow me that you're not ready to lay down the idol of your business, your career, and all the stuff you're trying to do. And I'm not interested. This is Jesus speaking to the rich and girl. I'm not interested in your leftovers. I'm not interested. It could have been, now if this was the American church, the rich and ruler would be on the board because he had a lot of money. So we'd put him on staff and now he'd be making decisions in the church. But Jesus said, I'm not trying to get as many people as possible to follow me for the sake of a number. I'm trying to make true disciples and I would rather not have you follow me. Now, why would he not want the rich young ruler to follow him? Because if the rich young ruler followed him and wasn't all the way in, I, I'm, you could probably see where I'm going. He would be a bad representation of the kingdom of God. And Pastor Mike, when people met the rich young ruler, they would think, Think that's how Jesus is and Jesus said I'm not selfish like you are I'm not arrogant like you are I'm not haughty like you are I'm not lazy like you are and this is why in Revelation chapter 3 he said I'd rather you be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm it makes me sick you're poison to my body I have to vomit you out because you're poisoning the body and you're making me look bad but I believe this this morning there are some believers they are going to walk in the supernatural power of God. Jesus is inviting you into a lifestyle, not a Sunday morning experience. What's the Sunday morning for? This is training. This right here, what we should be doing every week as a church, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, Ephesians chapter 4, the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to equip, not to do ministry, but to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. My job and Pastor Mike's job is to be in fasting, to be in prayer. We are not running an ambulance service for you. We are not, the, oh, three in the morning, I got to be there because I need pastor. No, we are here to give you the weapons of warfare. And the Bible says that our weapons are not carnal. These are not natural weapons we hand you, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. We are handing you a sniper rifle this morning, and we're saying, don't just shine your weapon. Don't just say, oh, I have weapons in God, but actually utilize the weapons that God has given you. God has mandated you, and God is putting pressure on us. I feel it in myself. I was just thinking this last couple of days. I'm not doing enough for God. I'm, I'm, I'm all day, every day, I'm obsessed with God, I'm up all night, I'm thinking about Him, I wake up, I have an addiction to the presence of God, I am so addicted to the presence of God, I am so obsessed, I got saved almost 11 years ago, and they said, Isaiah, your fire's gonna die, you're gonna, you know, you're just, you're just on a high, and you're just on a honeymoon, and friend, I have been on 11 year honeymoon, and I'm never coming home, I have been on fire, my fire is hotter, October 31st of 2021 than it's ever been, and I come against every lie, 
lie of the devil that you're going to lose your passion. I come against every assignment that you're going to lose your flame. I believe the fire that God is pouring out on you this morning is going to burn until your very last breath. And you're going to stand before God. And God is going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. For you've done the work your master called you to do. I know the message is hard, but I'd rather it be hard and you get your life right than stand before God and realize you were never a Christian. Imagine how many believers are going to meet God for the first time on Judgment Day. Let me say that again. Imagine how many Christians are going to meet God for the first time on Judgment Day. And let me tell you why. Because the God that you're going to meet is not going to be the God your pastor introduced you to. The God that you meet is not the God. Listen to me closely. I've preached in over 500 churches in the United States. The God that we're meeting in the American church is not the God of Scripture. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, he said, here's the problem with y'all. He's talking to the church. He said, you happily put up with what anybody preaches, even if they preach a different Jesus, they preach a different spirit, and they preach a different gospel. Paul is identifying three things happening in this hour. He said, number one, there's a Jesus in the church that's not the Jesus of the Bible. Now, this was like barely a couple years. I don't know, it was like 30 or 40 years after Jesus, not even after Jesus died. And already a few years after Jesus died, they already erected a false Jesus that was in the church. Now, how many of you know if that could happen years after Jesus left, where 2,000 years later, how much have we changed Jesus? How different does Jesus us look and our culture is the worst because we live in a edited out photoshop crop filter culture i meet some of y'all pastor mike i meet some of the people from our our things that were friends on instagram and you come up to me i'm so and so on instagram you message me and i'm like wait you you're that person on instagram you don't look some of you your, your friends and family, if they saw you on Instagram, they wouldn't even know it was you because you put so many filters. And some of y'all, you'll put a filter on it. Come on, I, I, Pastor Mike, you don't do this, do you? You'll put a filter on it, and then you'll put a, you'll go to another program. Put like a, You have like three filters. By the time you get your video, your image processed, it just looks like a cartoon. It's like you're not even the same bird. Like your eyes are not hazel. You don't even have freckles. I, come on, ladies, where are y'all at? You know the filter I'm talking about. It's like your eyes are all shining. You just got out of bed. I'm like, ain't nobody looking like that coming out of bed. And then we meet you and we're like, wait a minute. You're that person? We don't even recognize you because you're so filtered. You're so edited. And the more you edit something, the harder it becomes to recognize. And we've edited Jesus. We put filter after filter. And we want to make him look good. And we don't want to have him cast out demons. And we don't want him to heal the sick. And we don't want him to preach on hell. And we don't want him to preach on repentance. And we don't want him. So we edit out and we cancel. Let's just edit out deliverance because, you know, vomiting. We just rented this building. We don't want him to vomit on the grounds. And let's just, it might scare the the new people and you know there's this new entrepreneur here he's a millionaire and we don't want to scare his family away so we have to make sure and so we edit the church to make it compatible to your demons to make it function so that you can come and still have all your compromise but still feel safe here it's like we want to be a safe place i don't want to be a safe place for demons i don't want to be a safe place where sinners feel comfortable i want people to fall under the conviction come on where's my old school pentecostal preachers i want to fall under to the conviction of the presence and the power of God. You can keep the fake. You can keep the plastic. You can keep the synthetic. Would somebody give me the Jesus of the Bible? Would someone preach me this thing like it's real? I want the real Jesus. Here's why. The fake Jesus doesn't deliver people. The fake Jesus doesn't heal people. The fake Jesus will not convict you when you're living in adultery. Pastor Mike, I know people that will spend years in adultery in the church. And you know my thought? How are you so comfortable? I'll tell you why. Because the pulpit never addressed your adultery. The pulpit never addressed your demons. And this is what they say. They, they told you this a thousand times. How, have I, how is it possible, Isaiah, I have a demon and I've been in church for 30 years because your church never confronted your demon? Friend, I've done over a thousand deliverances. And when I pray for people, most of the people I pray for, a lot of them are like, I don't have any demons. I'm like, let's see. Give me five minutes to check. And then I ask them this, have you ever checked? 
I go, what does that mean? Has a pa- think, think just, just, I know my mind's blown like yours. Think about this. Has a pastor in 30 years of you being a Christian, has a pastor who's supposed to be a warrior, a watchman, make sure that you're good. Has he ever co- looked you in the face and said, I command, which the Bible says to do, we're only staying scriptural. I command every demonic spirit. I command every, I bind you, Satan, in Jesus name. Come up and out in Jesus. Has a, pa- a pastor's never done that. Then what are they doing? Well, they've been to my quinceanera, they've been to my barbecue, and they come to my house and they, they bless me. They bless you with what? The way that your pastor should bless you is by helping you get free from the demonic bondages that the enemy wants to put you in. But we've coexisted with darkness. So now it's like, we're okay. It's like, we're just going to take the latest movie and turn it into a sermon series. And so now we have Night at the Movie series. We have all these ridiculous sermons because pastors are spending more time in green rooms than upper rooms. They're more concerned with their air condition than their prayer condition. If you go, I'm on a tangent, but I don't care because they said I could take all the time I need. If you go to a pastor's interview, Pastor Mike will vouch for me. I'm probably going to get him in trouble here. If you go to a pastor's interview, they never ask you about prayer they never ask you about holiness they never go to go to the mega churches go to their website they're gonna have the pastor they're gonna have his interests his hobbies his favorite movies you know his favorite movies are gonna be like Scarface Godfather one of the biggest churches in my city I was like let me just look up this church's website and I'm looking at it and it's like all the past senior pastor has a little picture and has all of his interests not, nothing about God nothing about scripture nothing about what the power it's a what's his favorite movie this guy's favorite movie Scarface um, what Shawshank Redemption I'm like Scarface like you're a pastor but these are the things that we're interested in and these are the things so we ask you at the interview because I've been in them okay well are you good with people are you good at networking are you good at meeting with people do you know how to do weddings do you know how to do no one asks you do you live holy nobody asks you are you consecrated nobody asks you what kind of music are you do you listen to what nobody asks you do you cast out devils nobody asks you do you lay hands on the sick and we have made a fake fabricated lawn chair plastic Jesus and the church and here's the problem Paul says the problem's not even that you've made it he goes you happily put up with it you're happy about it I go praise God we found a great church and they have a gymnasium and an arcade and a gym and we love it the big mega church down the street from me they have a bigger gym than any gym in our city they have a bigger arcade than Chuck E. Cheese they have rock they have more entertainment than any John's incredible pizza I'm like man my kids want to go there not because they want God because they want to get in that arcade for free and we've made all these things and we're just happy as long as our families say and as long as it's and God says this is not the Jesus of the Bible the Jesus of the Bible called men to die he said if any man wants to come stop being happy with the fake plastic Jesus that you worship stop putting up with your demons say wait a minute if I need deliverance deliver me in Jesus name if I need freedom I need freedom I'm tired of being a Christian in word but not in action this is what the Bible says don't love people in word love them in action his re- oh, I feel, I feel convicted. I'm convicting myself, so I got to slow down because I'm making myself sweat. We love homeless people. Prove it. Prove it. We love deliverance. Prove it. I have talked to pastor, leader after leader after leader. Why do you keep going after leaders? Because that's where it starts. That's where the dysfunction has started. You're only worshiping the golden calf because Aaron made it. Without Aaron, there's no golden calf. So we have now worship idols and we're sheep, so we're supposed to follow. It's not bad to be a sheep. You're following your leader and because the leaders are so weak and soft because we have a bunch of pacifier preachers in America. Friend, do you know why a pacifier was designed? It was designed to make a baby's brain think it was eating so it would stop crying when the baby was never getting nutrition. And we have pastors that shove a pacifier in your mouth to get you to think that you're eating when you're not eating anything, when you're not learning anything all you're learning is how to be a better person but good people don't get into heaven godly people get into heaven and it's not about having a pacifier it's about getting substance and actually doing the works of Jesus and I know most preachers would hear the sermon and cringe because they're not doing anything like oh man I don't like this this sounds like works it only sounds like works to you because you're lazy Imagine me telling my wife, honey, I love you. I care about you. We get married. And then every single day I'm sitting on my couch watching TV and she's vacuuming. She's cleaning. She's mowing the lawn. She's taking out the trash. She's raising the kids. And I live on a, a lazy boy. And then every week she comes, honey, would you do something? Oh no, I'm, I'm not about works, honey. 
I'm about grace. I'm not, I'm not into the works. I'm not, we don't do works here. We're just all about the grace of God. And she's like, I love that you're into grace, but grace isn't going to get anybody delivered and saved around you. Get up off your lazy tail and go mow the lawn and go, or otherwise I'm going to divorce you. And you know, over and over God says, I'm going to divorce Israel because they've gone back to their idols and they've not obeyed the Lord, their God. And friend, understand that when we don't do the works, it's proof that we don't love God and God wants to put something in you, not where you force yourself this is not about works where it's like i gotta force myself to do things this is about having so much love for god having divine pleasure divine fire where you get out of bed and say i'm privileged that i'm able to work for the king of kings and work for the lord of lords friend jesus is your co-worker the holy spirit is your co-worker he sent them on the great commission go look at the word commission it means co-mission it's literally spelled commission and God says I have a mission I want to go on with you but if you keep in this mindset this other Jesus I'm never going to be able to use you in my kingdom you're unusable you're unfit because you're taking up space. Luke chapter 13, there was a tree, a fig tree, and the gardener says, we need to cut it down. I mean, the, the, the owner says, we need to cut it down. And the gardener says, why do you want to cut down the fig tree? And here's what he says. He said, for three years, this thing has been here, and it hasn't produced any fruit. And he says, I want to chop it down. Here's the reason, because it's taking up space in my garden, and it's not producing anything. And the gardener says, I understand, master, that you want to cut this tree down. By the way, we represent the tree. I get it. It's taking up space. It's wasting room. It's not producing. But give me one more year. Give me one more chance to give it special attention, the Bible says, and to give it special fertilizer. And if you come back a year from now and there's no fruit, then you're allowed to chop it down. And friends, some of you are six months into your one more year. Are you hearing me, V1? Some of you are eight months into your one year where God is saying you're a mature believer. You've been in church for way too long to be sucking on your thumb. You've been in church for way too long to have no fruit in your life. You've been in way church way too long to still be gossiping and still be arguing. There should be fruit in your life. And God is saying, I'm giving every one of us this morning another chance to do the works that I did. See, not only did he say you've allowed a different Jesus, said you've allowed a different spirit. We've allowed demonic spirits in the church that have told us it's okay to do nothing for God and still be a Christian. It's okay to live for ourselves. Now, listen, I'm not here to argue no in salvation. I believe if you prayed, if you believe in your heart, if you're a believer, you're saved, you got to work out your own salvation through fear and trembling. And I'm not here to tell anyone in here that's like, I know I'm a believer, but now I'm doubting my salvation. That's not what we're doing. That's between you and God. But I am here to tell you that some of you will barely be saved, according to the Apostle Paul. He said, you're going to get there and you're going to barely escape the flames of judgment because there was no evidence of our life. And I want my life to bear evidence. Every Every day now this is not something I am a hundred and fifty thousand miles from arriving at my destination where God wants me so what I'm preaching to you is what I'm convicted by because I'm looking at my life and I'm going how much time do I spend on my phone and not spend at the throne what is my screen time compared to my God time what is my what is my thought life what is my thoughts consumed about and for me often how do I do this how could I do this how could I get better how can I do all these things that yeah they seem like they're for God and their intentions are good but God is saying I want somebody that's going to get alone in the secret place with me I want someone that's going to get connected to me Isaiah how do I make myself want to drive out demons how do I make myself want to heal the sick how do I make myself want to evangelize to people the only way you're going to want to do it is if you spend time with the one that does it and so listen if you don't want to do it it's because you probably don't spend time with God and the more time you spend the more you actually step out and do it the more you're going to want to do it and the more you're going to realize that I've been called and I've been anointed to do this ministry see Jesus in Matthew 12 10 sent the 12 to cast out demons and he didn't go with them so stop thinking I'm not ready I don't have what it takes Jesus cast out demons said you 
you already saw me do it. Now I'm going to send you out. The 12 came back. Then in Luke 10, he sends the 72. So he now broadens the mandate. He says, okay, well, there's 12 of you. Praise God. You're casting out demons. It's working. Awesome. But there's just way too many demonized people in New York. There's just way too many demonized people in California. Jesus limited himself to being at one place at one time while he was on the earth. He gave up divine privileges. And Jesus is like, I need more people. I cannot be the only one casting out demons, which is why in a few minutes here, we're going to have everybody praying for you from the prayer team, not just Isaiah. And so Jesus said, I got to enlist 12. Okay, there's 12 of you. There's not enough. And so we need 72. Now the 72, they're going to go out and do it. And now the 72 come back in the book of Luke and they're shocked. They're surprised. Like many of you that don't cast out demons, you're going to start driving out demons and you're going to be like, it actually works. It actually works. Like Pastor Mike, you're, you weren't lying in your videos. Like literally, I commanded the demon to leave and the demon left. And Jesus is like, did you not believe me? Why are you shocked? Why are you excited? I saw Satan fall off like lightning. Like he's lost power. He's lost authority. Jesus is like, didn't you know that this is the reason why I've come? Friend, let me tell you why the American church doesn't do deliverance or believe in it at large. It's because they don't know the true definition of salvation. They think salvation means pray a prayer, repeat after me in third grade at band camp, and then you're going to go to heaven no matter what you do. When salvation, look it up on Google, it literally means to be set free, to be delivered, to be preserved, and to be protected. It does not mean you repeated a prayer and filled out a card. It means that God has set me free. He's filled me with his Holy Spirit. He's given me the same power. Come on, help me preach. He's given me the same authority. I've been saved. I've been rescued. I've been pulled out of the kingdom of darkness and transferred. He wired, transferred me out of the devil's bank account into the kingdom of light. And now I'm a son and daughter of the most high God. I have the same authority that Jesus had. He's now given me. I'm not worshiping another Jesus. I'm worshiping the God of scripture. I'm not worshiping the Jesus of Fox, CNN, or ABC. I'm worshiping the God of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm praising and I'm worshiping the biblical Jesus that actually has evidence in his life. 72 come back. And then all of a sudden it goes from 72, not everyone, 72 are out casting out demons, which were all the real disciples, to now in Mark 16, Jesus goes, okay, I'm going to enlist the entire body of Christ to cast out demons. And you know what? I'm going to introduce a word called a believer, which by the way, there was no believers up until this point. Mark 16 is the first time we see believers. And guess what? You guessed it because y'all are demon slayers, so you already know. The very first sign you're going to be a believer is you're going to cast out devils. The very, you're not going to heal the sick first. You're not going to preach the gospel first. You're not going to make this. The very first sign, those that believe here's what's going to happen. Number one, they're going to cast out demons. Why? Because deliverance is a byproduct of being a genuine Christian. I cast demons out. Now I'm not saying you have to go to Walmart and stand on a thing or go drive out demons everywhere you go, but I'm saying you should be ready and you should be available when you're spending three hours with your cousin from out of town who goes to some dead church and she says, I've never told anybody this, but I've been wanting to take my life. I've never told anybody this, but I deal with depression. When your boss comes to you and says, I've never told anybody this, but I have constant tormenting thoughts. Ben, you can come up. I have constant tormenting thoughts. I have constant desires of darkness. And you're like, wait a minute. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. And because I believe, I cast out demons. And so we could take care of those critters right now. And we could drive those things out of you. And you might have come to work demonized, but you're going to leave work set free and delivered by the power of God. Because at lunch, me and you are going to our car. And I'm going to deliver you right there in your suburban because the same spirit that raised Christ is now alive inside of me. When you're at your house and your friend says, man, I, I really want to get baptized. I've never been baptized. Well, and I, I know I'm hurting some of you guys here and some of the pastors are cringing, but it's okay. You'll get over it. And you're like, oh, V1 has baptisms next month, but guess what? You don't have to wait till next month because I got a bathtub I could fill up right now. Come on. Don't act like all of you live in a studio apartment with no bathtub. I got a bathtub right now. I could dunk you so quick. My, my apartment has a swimming pool right down there. And, oh, I'm too cold. It, let's go right now. We got this. Oh, I really wish someone would disciple me. And you're like, I got a kitchen table. I could disciple you right now. Friend, it, you know what Jesus, what's so crazy about Jesus is he made doing his work so easy. 
He didn't say you have to go through five years of training, four years of cemetery, I mean seminary, four years of Bible college, 15. He goes, here's what you're going to do, Mark 16. All you're going to do, I, it's not, it's, I know a lot of this sounds crazy to you guys because it's this simple. We just overcomplicate. You're going to take your hand and you're going to lay it on the sick and they're going to recover in Jesus' name. It's, it's one action. It doesn't take Bible college to lay your hands on a sick. How, how do I cast out demons? Now we have videos and 10 steps. We overcomplicate it. I overcomplicate it. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to command the demon to leave and you're going to cast it out in Jesus' name. And guess what? I'm not even going to show you, train you, or go with you because you're going to figure it out because I got, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit is going to instruct you. The Holy Spirit is going to empower you. And Jesus said, so the Father. Listen to me here, church. By the way, I was trying, I'm not even in my intro yet, but it's okay. I haven't started my intro. I haven't even started. Let's praise, let's shout. I'm not like I'm not even there. I'm just still in the very pre-intro. Pastor Mike knows exactly what I'm talking about. Jesus said this: So the Father has sent me, so now I'm sending you. What did the Father send Jesus to do on the earth? Cast out demons. How do you know? Mark chapter one. The oldest book in the Gospels, the very first book written, the start of Jesus' ministry. This is Jesus' opening service. We're going to introduce Jesus, his very first service ever preaching. It's going to be great. What are we going to mark his first service by? Mark chapter 1. He gets up for the first time ever, the one that was life, spoke life, and gave life. The man they were reading about is now standing center stage. And as he's preaching the Gospel, the Bible says, a man from the synagogue... This was not some drug addict, witch, warlock, like trench coat. Ugh. This was a man that was a faithful follower of Yahweh. So stop with the, I don't think I need deliverance. That's a demon. Come out in Jesus' name. The man in the synagogue is sitting there listening and starts. And here's what they marveled at. This man, listen to me. We've heard all these other preachers before. But this man speaks with some type of authority. There's something supernatural about this guy. We don't know what it is. And I pray that's what you feel when I preach. I mean, obviously we all want that. We want to preach with authority and power. But when he speaks, because for years we've been preaching and no one's ever manifested. But this guy speaking something and his words are landing on people. And they're landing on people and people are manifesting because he speaks the words of eternal life. This is why when all everybody left Jesus and his greatest crusade, thousands left him because he said, oh, by the way, you need to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And everybody left and he looked at the 12 and the 12 were sitting there shaking because they spent months handing out flyers and promoting it on Facebook. And they're like, you're the worst evangelist of all time. You literally just cleared out the entire West Bear. I mean, you ruined everything. And Jesus is like, are you guys going to leave too? Because I don't need you. I really want to partner with you and co-labor, but every single one of us, including Isaiah, are replaceable to God. That's why the Bible says, don't say you're a son of Abraham. Surely God can take the stones and turn them into sons and daughters of Abraham. So don't think you're special. I'm God's one. No, God can raise somebody up next to you in five seconds. He goes, you can leave. And here's what Peter said. Peter says, Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. Where would we go? Here's what Peter was saying. We've tried drugs. We've tra I was in a metal band. I was playing drums like some of you guys were. I know you were traveling on tour. I was in a metal band playing with all these big bands at the parties, playing music for the devil. I was leading worship for the devil. And I'm telling you, I've done all the stuff that people do. And Peter said, we've played in the metal bands. We've danced at the strip clubs. We've judged drugs. We've drank. We've partied. We've done every drug. We've gone every high, every psychedelic, every rave. He says, and in everything we've done and all the things that we've searched for, there was nothing that really gave us life. He said, but every time you open up your mouth something comes alive on the inside of us it wasn't just that you have the words of eternal life it was that when you speak we feel eternal life when you speak everything changes it's the men on the road to Emmaus it says did our hearts not burn when that man read us the scripture there's something about you Jesus where would we go we've already left the metal pans We've already left the relationship. We've already left the clubs, the raves. Where would I go back? I've burned every bridge. I have no vomit to go back to. Nothing makes me feel the way that Jesus makes me feel. And it's time for me to go to that next place in God. Mark 1, demons get cast out. And this is what Mark chapter 1 says for all of you Pharisees in the room. Love you. This is what Mark 1, I really do. I know I'm snarky, but I really do love you. I'm really nice outside of the anointing. Mark chapter 1. You know, I'm a nice, I'm like, I'm, I'm the nicest guy you're going to ever meet. You'll 
Trust me, I'll pray for your child and hug you, all that. Mark chapter 1. And Jesus, I think it's Mark 139 or 138. I could be mistaken. Jesus, here's what the Bible says. We're going to close right here. Went from synagogue to synagogue, casting out demons. Where was Jesus doing deliverance inside the modern day church? What was his ministry marked by casting out demons? Every city he went to, he cast out demons. The disciples cast out demons. And the book of Acts, the only named, because I got to be careful because they're like, it's not the only evangelist. The only named evangelist in all of scripture. There's only one person in all of your Bible that's called an evangelist. Now I know nowadays every one of us have our business card. Everybody's an evangelist. Like I'm an evangelist. I'm an apostle. That's, it wasn't like that in scripture. There's only one named evangelist in scripture. His name was Philip. He had four daughters just like me. Praise the Lord and they all prophesied in Jesus name my kids will prophesy and here's what the Bible says Philip preached the gospel they responded to the gospel they got saved and then Philip cast out demons and healed the sick and because demons were cast out listen to me New York the Bible says because people were getting delivered and demons were screaming as they left their victims like it's about to happen right now the Bible says and there was great joy in that city for the biblical model of evangelism is not raise your hand fill out a card and pray the sinner's prayer the biblical model of evangelism is repent of your sin turn from your waves and let's cast these devils out of you in the mighty name of Jesus we have to go back to the blueprint of scripture and not the made up model of the American church. God is looking for a remnant. Come on, help me. Everybody stand up. God is looking for a remnant in these last days. You cannot afford to play church. You cannot afford to live on the sidelines. This morning, I'm enlisting you. I want to be a real Christian. I want to be a real Christian. Is it possible for Isaiah to stand before God after getting hundreds of millions of views and God say, I don't know you? Absolutely. It's a real tension. I, I want to be a real Christian. I want to stand before God and God say, well done, and not end up well done in hell. You're going to either be well done in heaven or well done in hell. And I would rather God say well done than end up well done. Well done, good and, good and faithful. And what does he describe you as? Servant. If you're a servant and you don't work, you get fired. Servants don't have a choice. And here's what the Bible says. When you do the basic things God told you to do, don't ask for a handout. Don't ask for praise. You should not get worship for casting out demons, healing the sick. Those are all basic things we're all called to do. So don't expect that to happen and then you get platformed and everyone worship you. That's just what you're supposed to do. So stop asking for extra credit for doing your basic work. It's like, I want someone to notice me. God notices you and that should be good enough. Come on, right now, we're going to believe God for mass. I, will, I had a whole sermon on Mark 5 and the man at the tombs and who cares? Who cares? You can go find online on 500 hours. So if you want a cute message that gets your hair standing up, go on my old YouTube channel. Today, God is, God is convicting us. And God is revealing areas of our life that don't line up with his word. And you don't need to walk out with your head down all condemned. You're going to walk out with your head up saying, I have the spirit of God. And the same way God sent Jesus to the earth, Jesus said, I now send you. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for deliverance this morning. I'm ready to get free. I want every critter out of me. I want every demon out of me. I'm tired of letting these demonic spirits hold me back because it is not the Holy Spirit that's holding you back this morning. It is not the Holy Spirit that's making you not pray. It is not the Holy Spirit. That thought right now where you're like, this isn't for me. That's not the Holy Spirit. It's a demonic spirit. And the devil is right outside this building according to scripture. And here's what he's doing. He's prowling around the streets in the parking lot. And here's what he's waiting for. Who will still belong to me after this service? He's right outside roaming the parking lot saying, I wonder who's still going to be mine after the service. And I say that there will not be one person in Jesus' name that still belongs because we are having a bank wire transfer and you are being transferred out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light in Jesus' name that you will be delivered in Jesus' name, that you will be saved in Jesus' name. If God be God, then serve God. But if Baal is God, then serve Baal. But how long will you halter between two opinions? It is time to say, Lord, deliver me. Lord, set me free. Satan, you are bound in Jesus' name. I bind every demonic spirit. I bind every demonic power. Satan, it's time for you to come up and out in Jesus' name. Spirit of addiction, we bind you in Jesus' name. Spirit of anger,
here. We know you're there. We bind you in Jesus' name. I put the spirit of Jezebel on notice. I put the spirit of Ahab and Leviathan on notice. Every power out in Jesus' name. Every power of witchcraft, come out in Jesus' name. Every power of witchcraft, come on, prayer team. Just go ahead and disperse, disperse, disperse. Out, out, out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Usually I'll lead you through a prayer. I don't feel led to do that. We're just going to go for it. Come out now in Jesus' name. We're not leading you through a mass deliverance prayer. You're getting delivered. You're ready. Let's go. Come out. Right now, every demonic power out in Jesus' name. Spirit of suicide, we put you on notice. Come out right now. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Spirit, God is saying right now I'm setting someone free from a suicidal spirit. Out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Spirit of pride. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Generational curse of adultery. You will not cheat on your wife in Jesus' name. Generational curse of alcohol. You're broken now. The blood is against you, Satan. The blood is against you, Satan. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. The prayer team's gonna start laying hands. We're just gonna pray. Listen, if you don't need deliverance, if you don't need it, you can keep your hand down. But if you need deliverance, you keep your hand up when we come to you. You just make sure you wave one of us down. I want you to say, leave me now, Satan, in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power. I renounce every work of darkness. I command every unclean spirit to leave me in Jesus' name. I am not your home. You have no power over me. Spirit of fear, leave. Spirit of addiction, leave. Spirit of anger, leave. Spirit of witchcraft, leave. Spirit of adultery, leave. I commend every idol to fall in Jesus' name. Leave me now. I plead the blood of Jesus against every curse, against every spell, against every hex. I cancel every assignment from the kingdom of darkness. I am free in Jesus' name. Just begin to pray in your own way right now. Just ask the Lord to deliver you right now. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Come out right now. Voodoo. Voodoo, you're broken down in Jesus' name. Voodoo, you're broken down in Jesus' name. Maybe you're from Jamaica or Haiti or Africa or a nation that really practices this and you have it in your bloodline and you came over and you came and immigrated to the U.S. Tonight, God is breaking those spirits that immigrated with you. I see the Lord take every demon that immigrated with you over from Africa, over from Bahamas, over from Jamaica, over from Mexico, those, those immigrating demons. I'm telling you, I deal with people all the time where their demons came from another country. We command those immigration demons to go now. Every foreign spell, voodoo, every generational curse that's in your bloodline is broken in Jesus' name. Broken in Jesus' name. Suicide, you have to go in Jesus' name. Spirit of addiction, nicotine addiction, every curse of nicotine addiction, alcohol addiction, sleep paralysis, every night demon, incubus and succubus, out in Jesus' name, out in Jesus' name. Every night spirit, every night terror, out in Jesus' name. Some of you have been seeing demons in your home and it's not even in your house, it's in you. And God is saying it's time to go now, in Jesus' name. Those of you that have been seeing spiders everywhere, wave at me. God's gonna deliver you right now. Come on, I, I'm getting words of knowledge here. You've been seeing spiders, that spirit goes in Jesus' name. That's a spirit of fear, a spirit of trauma, a spirit of torment, out in Jesus' name. No more seeing snakes, no more seeing spiders. Come out in Jesus' name. Go now, trauma. You have no power. These are the people of God. And we cast you out now in Jesus' name. We cast you out now in Jesus' name. Those of you that were in traumatic car accidents, now you just constantly think about dying. Spirit of death, come out right now. Spirit of death, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirit of death, come out now in Jesus' name. Near-death experiences are open doors. Come out now. Every spirit attached to that, God is delivering you right now. Just open your mouth, let it come out of your mouth, out of their mouth now and into the abyss. Come on, people are getting delivered all over. Out of their mouth now, 
out of their mouth now and into the abyss in Jesus' name. Come right out of their mouth in Jesus' name. Mental health, I've come against every mental disorder now, every bipolar, every ADHD, OCD. You gotta lock the door seven times. You gotta turn the knob seven times. I come against that spirit. Spirit of OCD, we bind you in Jesus' name. You're not gonna have to lock the door 10 times. You're not gonna have to close the door 10 times. We come against you, OCD, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we come against mental illness. Every demon of mental illness, just like the man at the tombs, he was mentally schizophrenic, and God delivered him. God can deliver him, God can deliver you. Anger, come up and go now. Anger, come up and go now. Come up and go now, anger in Jesus' name. Spirit of anger, we bind you. You have no legal right. You have no power. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come on, pray. God can deliver you right now. With no one even laying hands on you, God can deliver and do the work. It's all by faith. Right now in Jesus' name, anger, you have to go. Anger, you have to go. Confusion. Come on, that's the most common demon we deal with. And deliverance, confusion, get out now. That fog, that haziness, that cloud, we come against you now in Jesus' name. Confusion, come up and out now. We put you on notice. Out of their mouth, into the abyss, in Jesus' name. We cast you out, confusion. Go! Go in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. There it is. Come on, there it is. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Confusion, go. Confusion, go. Confusion, go. I hear the Lord saying soul ties are being broken. Soul ties are being broken in Jesus' name. Father, we break every soul tie right now in Jesus' name. We break it now. Every soul tie is broken right now. Come on, if there's a soul tie, it's getting broken right now in Jesus' name. Maybe it was an ex-boyfriend, maybe it was an ex-girlfriend, and you're having the same demons they had, the same symptoms, broken in Jesus' name. Come out, come out, come out. Leave her in Jesus' name. Leave her in Jesus' name. Every soul tie, the blood is against you. We cancel, we cut, we cut and sever every soul tie right now it doesn't matter how many people if you remember or not we break it we sever it we sever the root we sever the root in jesus name we sever the root in jesus name we sever abortion we break you now out of her in jesus name out of her in jesus name come out come out go 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 All right, there's more. There's more that the Lord wants to do right now. Now we're gonna deal with something now from the front to the back. I disperse team members to go into the balcony. They should be in the balcony already. We are not playing games. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, God. We got the devil cornered in this place. Every person leaves free today. But I wanna deal with something. I know demons are manifesting even at the sound of my voice. But I'm here to evict every spirit. I'm here to call notice on every foul spirit that your assignment is over because the blood of Jesus cancels it. How many of you are thankful for the blood of Jesus? Just one drop of that blood. Now here's what I want you to do. Bring the music down. Many of you, your life has been destroyed. Can you hear this preacher? Your life has been destroyed by lust. It's been destroyed by perversion. It's been destroyed by molestation and rape. Your life has been destroyed. You've tried every program. You've tried everything. Nothing works. But I'm here to tell you that today is the day it's final because deliverance has come to you. But we need to break a curse of lust and perversion. Are you ready? I want everybody, people are manifesting now, 
but there's more, there's more of you. You know what I'm talking about. Pornography addiction, you know what I'm talking about. Promiscuity sleeping around, you know what I'm talking about. Those demons that entered you through a molestation or a rape, you felt guilt, shame, condemnation, but today you leave this place free. I want everybody right now to just raise up their voice and pray this prayer with me because we are gonna break curses right now. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for sexual perversion. Forgive me, Father. I repent for any sexual activity outside of your will. And I break and release myself from every generational curse of lust and perversion. I break every curse from my mother's side, from my father's side, and I am free. Now, I need you to do some self-deliverance right now. Everybody say this with me. Every spirit of sexual perversion, loose me and let me go. Come out of me now. Come on, right now in the name of Jesus, every spirit, go out, 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 up and out. Every spirit of sexual perversion, molestation, rape, pornography, in the name of Jesus, up and out. Go, 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 up and out, 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 no hiding. Out, out, go, go, now, now, out, 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 out. I will not move on to the next one until God is done with what he wants to do with sexual perversion. Every stubborn demon, Look me in my eyes now. I'm speaking with the authority of Jesus Christ. You have tormented them with addiction for too long and I command you to go in the name of Jesus now. Go up and out, every single one of you. Now, every single one of you foul spirits, out in the name of Jesus. Come on, there it is. There's more, there's more. There's more, that's okay. Come on church, this is what freedom sounds like. This is what freedom sounds like. Thank you, Father. Come on. Out. Come on, the Holy Spirit's doing the work. Come on, these are demons of sexual perversion. They're coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out. You must come out. You will come out. You will not hide. You will come out now. 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 Every spirit of shame, I command every spirit of shame out. I speak to every spirit of shame, guilt, condemnation, and command you to leave now. Shame, go. Shame, guilt, condemnation, tormenting thoughts, out, out, now, out. Shame, 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 I bind you now and command you to come out. Guilt, condemnation, tormenting thoughts. The accuser of the brethren, I bind you now. You will not deceive. You will not lie. Out in the name of Jesus. I see people getting free. I see people getting free. The devil lost big today. He's not gonna get over you with those lies. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on, take that, you spirit of condemnation. Therefore, there is no 
condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There it is. There it is. Come on, condemnation, out. Yes, out. Come on, condemnation, out. There it is. There it is. Now, I want to deal with something right now that the Holy Spirit is highlighting to me. The Holy Spirit is highlighting to me that there are many of you that have taken on false identities. False identities. The enemy will have you wear a mask. You will become a person you know you're not supposed to be. You'll live a life that's counterfeit. And there is a demon behind that that will try to condition you to act a certain way, talk a certain way. But I believe that that spirit of false identity is getting ready to come out. Is there anybody who wants to be free from a false identity, a false identity? If you want to be free, just repeat after me. I break and re-release myself from every curse associated with false identity. I am a child of God, bought by the blood of Jesus. I am a child of God, bought by the blood of Jesus. Now loose me and let me go. Come on, out now, every spirit of false identity. Come out, out, out. Every false counterfeit identity, I bind you and command you, come up and out now in the name of Jesus. Up and out now in the name of Jesus. Wow. If you feel like crying uncontrollably, there's spirits that associate with deep hurts and wounds, and they associate with those deep wounds and hurt. If you feel like crying right now, there are times when spirits of rejection begin to manifest, even rejection from birth. You heard the stories, the stories that your mother wanted to abort you, that your dad was gonna pay for it, your biological father, some of you were born into the world rejected, but I break every curse of rejection off of you now. I break every curse of rejection now, and I command every spirit of rejection to come out, every spirit of low self-esteem, out, out, in the name of Jesus. Rejection, out, low self-esteem, out. Come on, there it is. If you're crying, the Lord's healing. See, healing and deliverance goes together. He's healing your heart. He's healing your heart from the pain. Healing your heart from the seasons that you endured of rejection. He's healing you now. Come on. Deliverance comes in the form of tears. I meet people who say, Pastor Mike, I haven't cried for years. I didn't even cry at my own family's funeral member. My own family's funeral, a member of my family, but why am I crying now? Because the Lord is healing. Come on, there it is. He's healing. Reversing rejection. Reversing low self-esteem. Some of you have never felt confidence The Lord is breaking that off of you now. Come on. Come on. I want to deal with something right now because this is a ruling spirit. Oftentimes when this spirit is dealt with, many other things start to come out. Many of you never intended to get involved in witchcraft, but you were afraid of your future, so you went to a psychic medium. You were afraid of how the situation was going to work out. You were afraid of how your love life was going to play out, so you accepted the bait of Satan. You've accepted the lie, but fear was the root. And so you think witchcraft was the root, but really it's fear. 
How many of you believe that you can be free from fear right now? Who's ready to get free from fear? You've made so many decisions in your life. Decisions to get with the wrong people. Decisions to go to the wrong place. Fear, I serve notice on you. Your time is up, fear. Come on, I'm gonna be bold and roar like the lion of the tribe of Judah because fear has taken too many years. Fear took your grandfather out. Fear took your great-great-grandfather out. But fear is getting ready to break in this place. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? You got, listen, you can only fight a spirit with an opposite spirit. You got to rise up in faith and say, my walk will be a walk of faith from now on. I will not be like those who came before me. In every line, there's got to be a breaker. And I will be the bloodline curse breaker in my family. Now I'm going to ask you again, who's ready to break the spirit of fear with me? Everyone just say with me, Heavenly Father, I repent for not trusting you but I choose to put my trust in you. And right now, break every spirit of fear, break every curse and release me now in Jesus name. Right now I speak to every spirit of fear, anxiety, worry, dread, apprehension, and I command you to go in the name of Jesus, up and out, now. There it is. Dread, apprehension, anxiety, go. Now, out, out, now. Every single one of you foul spirits of fear, go, 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 go. Come on, there's a breakthrough, go, go. We fight the strong man of fear. Go! Loose the people of God. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them now. Out! Out! 40 generations back. 50 generations back. 70 generations back. 80 generations back. Go! 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 Fear! Go! Go! Now! Watch! Witchcraft! Now! Go! Witchcraft, psychic mediums, voodoo, opia, go, out, out, now, python spirit, go, python spirit, out, python spirit, go, in the name of Jesus, now, 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 now. Did you feel that shift in the atmosphere? You were designed to make fear afraid. It's about time you make the enemy scared. We're gonna give fear fear. We're gonna depress the devil. We're gonna, he's gonna be walking around with his head low. Come on, people are getting free. People are getting free. Come on, that's all right. That's all right. This is what freedom sounds like. If a, if a church ain't crying, it's dying. Come on. If demons are shrieking, coming out, it sounds like the work of Jesus happening here in New York and around the world online. Come on, there's more. There's more. The Holy Spirit is now working. He's going to bring things to your remembrance. He's going to speak things to you now. Come on, don't be distracted. If he brings something to you to repent, begin to repent. Whatever he's bringing, let him deal with it. Let him deal with it. Let him deal with it. Come on, the Holy Spirit, there it is. The Holy Spirit's dealing with things. Come on. He's dealing with things. 
Rebe esh, im Rebe est, im Rebe gibt. Him riaylan on mon rie, esh, im Rebe est, im Rebe gibt esh. Him riaylan on mon rie, rish im rie ist, im riaylan on mon rie. Come on, let the Holy Spirit minister. Come on. Okay, as this moment is forming, I want to bring good news to somebody today. We don't have to wait for the angel to stir the pool of Bethesda because Jesus bore stripes on his back for complete and total healing. There was a woman crippled for years but the demon was the source of her being crippled. I actually believe that God is getting ready to do some medically verifiable miracles here. Chronic illness. Chronic illness. Fibromyalgia. Hey, do you hear me? Blindness. Deafness, do you hear me? Oh, I feel the power of God. Chronic illness, fibromyalgia, pain, pain, the spirit of pain, the spirit of fibromyalgia, the spirit of chronic illness, the spirit of MS. I'm speaking to the demons. I break your power and I command you to loose them and let them go now. Come out. Every spirit of infirmity come out now. Every spirit of infirmity come out now. Out. Out. Deafness come out. Deafness come out. Blindness. Blinding spirits out. In the name of Jesus, now out. Come on, it's happening. Every spirit of infirmity, I command you to come out now from the front to the back. No hiding, you must come out now. No hiding, out now. Every, every demon masquerading as pain must come out, must come out. Infertility, every spirit connected to that, come on, that is trying to block destiny and block legacy. I command wombs to open in the name of Jesus. Thank you for, for fertility, God. Right now, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, we release healing now. Come on, if you need healing, receive your healing now. Come on. We've seen thousands of people saved online. It's going to happen in the room now. Healing. I release healing. Healing for lower back conditions. Healing for headaches. I see the Lord healing cluster headaches. Somebody struggles with headaches. The Lord's healing now. Migraines. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Migraines are being healed now. Somebody's just feeling pain, being completely removed from their body. If that's you, just do something you couldn't do. Test it out, move it out. If you had an injury, something in your back, just begin to test it out right now. Just begin to test it out right now. Healing, healing, healing. A shoulder, a shoulder, a back, a knee, an ankle. Healing is happening now. Healing is happening now. Wow. Every spirit of double-mindedness that's tried to fracture her, I command you out now. Double-mindedness, come out of her now. Yes, you, double-mindedness, come out now, now, up and out in the name of Jesus. Yes, 
Your time is up. Double-mindedness, loose her now. From the root, I command you to come out. There it is. There it is. Every single one of you, now. Okay, I need you to understand what's happening a little bit. Because for those of you that this is new, I will tell you this, doctors, lawyers, public school teachers are receiving deliverance. It's time that we normalize what it would have looked like if you could time travel 2,000 years into the past and see what the first century church was doing. We're never going to apologize for doing first century commandments in the 21st century. This is what freedom feels like. This is what it sounds like. We have people receiving freedom right now. When I talked about healing, I want to tell you a story. We were doing a mass deliverance at V1 Church, Indiana. We have a campus outside of Chicago. I was praying in a service just like this. This girl, her biological father for years would slap both of her ears. And over the course of years through that physical trauma to her ears, her, ear, her hearing decreased to where she had significant hearing loss in a healing and deliverance service just like this. I began to pray for healing. And she ran to me afterwards and said, Pastor Mike, it sounded like someone took the volume knob on my ears and turned it all the way back up to full strength. Come on, somebody. Jesus still heals. But see, this is the beauty of the story I told you. Because she also had to deal with trauma from the abuse of her father. So she got delivered and healed. How many of you believe that God will heal and deliver? Do it now, God. If you were abandoned by one of your parents, wave at me. If one of your parents abandoned you, divorce, abandonment, they left, Okay, I want to go deeper. Guys, we got to go deeper. If one of your parents died prematurely, and maybe there was even a hurt, maybe even being angry at your parent for dying, I need you to be honest. Would you wave at me right now? Okay, there's many of you that suffered. The enemy comes in, and he begins to manipulate you. He begins to lie to you. He'll get you unforgiving. He'll get you in this situation. But God is about to heal you and deliver you right now. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Are you guys still with me to go through this? Because this next wave of deliverance is going to come in a wave from the front to the back. Many of you are probably going to start manifesting. I'm just taking us on a journey through layers right now. Are you ready? How many of you maybe in a romantic relationship have been left abandoned your expectations were met many of you have felt that you've had these things that have happened to you but the root of it is unforgiveness yes unforgiveness the spirit of unforgiveness cooperates with bitterness pride anger malice and even murder some of you guys come from families where there's been actual murder my father, my biological father killed someone. I had to deal with murder, but it doesn't start that way. It starts as unforgiveness. You refuse to let somebody go, and you think, if I can hold this unforgiveness against them, I'm punishing them, which is another way of you saying you're God. So forgiveness says, God, you're God, and I'm not God. You're going to have to righteously deal with it. So right now, I'm asking you, from the front to the back, we are going to take 20 seconds and we are going to begin to out loud say the names of those we need to forgive and we are going to release them and we are going to forgive them. We're going to forgive them for abandoning us. We're going to forgive them for molesting, for raping. We're going to forgive them for, for hurting. This is a very hard thing I'm asking you. But you cannot be a true believer, like Isaiah said, and yet hold unforgiveness against a person when you are clearly being forgiven by God. And so this is your next step in righteousness. How many of you want to be free? Okay, are you ready? Ben, help me out. Yeah. 
Okay, I want to I want you to partner with the Holy Spirit right now. And I want you to take the next 20 to 30 seconds. And I want you to say their name out loud. And I want you to say, I forgive them by name. And I want you to go down the list of anyone and everyone that you can think of. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be removing every single ability of the enemy to hold you bound to that thing. And freedom's going to come. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. Three, two, one, now. Just begin to say it out loud. I forgive them. I forgive my dad. I forgive my mother. I forgive my ex-husband, my ex-wife. Come on, say their names. I release them now. I forgive them now. I forgive my pastor. Come on, say his name. Your pastors, your teacher. Come on, the Holy Spirit's gonna bring, he's bringing them to your mind now. I forgive them. I forgive them. Come on, just say it. I forgive them. I release them to you, God. I will not hold it. Right now, under the sound of my voice, I speak to every spirit of bitterness, every spirit of unforgiveness, every spirit of murder, rage, anger. They have repented. They have broken every curse. They have released and forgiven those people. Your time is up now. Every spirit of unforgiveness and bitterness, I command you, to come out now. Come out of them now. In the name of Jesus, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, out in the name of Jesus now. Out. I sense some resistance. You will not resist. You will not resist the power of God now. You must come out now. Every spirit of unforgiveness, your legal right has been revoked. You must come out now in the name of Jesus. Out. There it is. There's more. You will not hide and you will not resist. You will not be stubborn. There it is. Out, 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 out. Every single one of you now. Praise God, praise God. Praise God. Jesus is setting the captives free. He's setting the captives free. He's setting the captives free. Yes, every single one of you must go now. Now you see, as we continue through this journey, there's people that got all the way to this point, no manifestation, and then suddenly we uncover something. Suddenly we pull the veil back and say, oh, there's something there. There's something there. Come on, there's more. Okay, I want to go back to something that we dealt with, but I believe we've got to go back to it. There's two spirits that I want to deal with from this stage. Our team is dispersed, but I want to deal with it from this stage. 
If you are tormented with thoughts about killing yourself, I want you to lift your hand and show me. If you are tormented with thoughts of killing yourself, come on, you've got to be bold. You've got to be bold. The Bible says Satan came to kill, to steal, and destroy. I'm here to cancel suicides. Come on, anybody else, if you've been tormented, okay, I see you. I see you. Now, you can put your hands down. There's another spirit I want to deal with. If you feel like you are constantly under a dark cloud, if you feel like you're never happy, you smile and you laugh with your friends, but it's all a show, and you've been struggling with it, you've been to therapy, you've been to counseling, we honor that. God raises up Christian counselors, we believe in that, but there's something else, like a dark cloud over your head and you're just bound with depression. And you're like, Pastor Mike, if I'll be honest, nobody else would know. But I'm being honest, I'm being real in this atmosphere. Is there anybody here who would raise their hand and say, that's me, Pastor Mike? Wow. Wow. With your hands still up, why don't you just look around the room? Yeah, come on, that's freedom. There's a wave of freedom that's about to go through. Oh my, my, my. I break every spirit of depression. I break every spirit of suicide and command you out now. Go in Jesus' name. Go. They will not be depressed. They will not die. They will live and declare the works of the Lord. They will live and declare the works of the Lord. They will live and not die. We cancel the assignment of death. Go, 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 go. Premature death, go. Premature death, go. Premature death, go. Go, out, out, out. Depression, go. Depression, come out of them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, now. Come out of her 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 now. I bind you, spirit. Out. Out. Now. You're not hiding. Come out of her now. She doesn't belong to you. She belongs to Jesus. You've had her for too long. Yes, now. There it is. Yes, there it is. Come on. There it is. Yes. Depression out, depression, suicide out. You will not have her. Your time is up. Your assignment has been canceled by the blood of Jesus. Go to the abyss, every single one of you now. Out, out. Come on, there it is. There it is. Yes, out now, now. Depression. Anxiety, anxiety and fear, go. Tormentor, go. I've pulled out every stronghold on her mind. Every lie from Satan. i pulled out every stronghold of anxiety and fear. Every stronghold of depression, go. Come on church, this is revival. Come on. Can, can you feel the waves of deliverance moving through? It's literally like coming wave after wave. You know, we do mass deliverances at V1 Church, and there's just something about God. He's coming back for a bride without spot or blemish. 
And when you do the laundry, it gets a little dirty, doesn't it? The water's a little filthy. When you're doing the laundry to get the spots and the blemishes out, it gets a little messy. But how many of you believe the blood of Jesus is purifying? Going into your mind, going into your emotions, going and come on. I just speak freedom over your soul, over your soul. Take back your mind, take back your mind, take back your mind. Come on, I speak freedom over every single mind. The warfare that's been on your mind. And oh, I'm speaking of something right now. The warfare that's been on your mind. I break every tormentor. Come on, every deceiver, every lying spirit. Go, loose their soul. Come out of their mind in Jesus' name. The enemy will not have your mind any longer. He will not have your mind any longer. I pull down every stronghold that has erected itself up against the Word of God. I bring every demonic thought into captivity now in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Lies are being broken. I can, I can feel it in my spirit. Lies are being broken now, 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 every lie. You were told when you would die. You were told what you can do and can't do. Lies be broken now. Some of you were lied to by pastors. They put a false identity on you. I break that lie. See how many demons are coming out as lies are being broken? They need their lies to stay. When the lies are broken, they go. So right now, I break every lie. Some of you were told that you were stupid by parents. I break that lie off of you now in the name of Jesus. Some of you are told that you will always be poor. You will always struggle. You, See, when the word always is used, it becomes a verbal curse. It, okay, we got to do this. You hear how much manifestation is starting to happen. Come on, I didn't come to play games. Are you with me? Okay, we got to go through some repentance because let me explain something to you. The power of life and death is in your tongue. So what do we use our tongue to say? I will always struggle. I'll always be sick. I will. So you have spoken word curses that need to be broken right now. Are you ready? I'm telling you, do you hear how intimidated these demons are by what I'm saying? And you thought, oh, everybody sounds like this. Everybody's negative in my family. Everybody's pessimistic. Everybody's, no, everybody was demonized, but I'm here to say everybody's getting free. So we are not gonna, we are not gonna partner with the devil with our words. I'm here to break some spoken word curses and then every demon associated with them's gotta go. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for speaking curses over myself. Forgive me for not speaking in agreement with your word. I thank you that I am what you say I am. And right now, I break and release myself from every spoken word curse spoken by others, spoken by myself. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Be free now. Come on, be free. Every spirit connected to spoken word curses, I command you to come out now. I command you to come out now. Yes, come on, there's more. Every spirit connected to spoken word curses, come out. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I, I really believe that some of you are just so overwhelmed by the presence of God. You don't know what freedom feels like. It's been a long time, maybe not ever, that you've encountered this. Come on, just take it in. <laughs> Every lie be broken. Every lie. Every lie. Every lie. Every single lie be broken off of you now in the name of Jesus. Every single lie that those demons have been holding on to. Come on. Every single lie be broken. 
I'm getting a little bit of a word of knowledge, but I, I, I believe that there's many of you that the devil said you'll never be pure again. I break that lie off of you now in the name of Jesus. I break that lie off of you. Come on, there's more. He said, I'll never be pure again. No, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on, it's the blood of Jesus. I break that lie. He'll make all things new. This is what he's doing. He's making all things new. All things new. Come on. He's making all things new. He's making all things new. Come on, demons hate the blood of Jesus because it's a reminder of victory. His power is broken. Jesus stands victorious. Jesus stands victorious. The lamb that was slain is victorious over death, over hell, over the grave. Nothing but the blood. Come on, demons are shaking. They're trembling. I dare you to enter into true worship in spirit and in truth. And I believe that if you want the gift of tongues, it's about to be unlocked and open to you. Come on, we got two warriors on the stage right now. I want every hand lifted from front to back. There's going to be a fresh wind, a fresh fire, and a fresh anointing. Some of you have longed for these days. Well, guess what? You're living in the days you knew would come. Are you ready for an impartation? Come on, Isaiah. Let's release it. Lord, release your power. Now. Lord, release your fire. Yes. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Come yes. on, ask him right now. Say, now. Me, Lord. Fill them in fire. Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' fire. name. Fire in 
Jesus name be filled fire in the mighty now. name of Jesus be yes. filled in the mighty name of Jesus now rivers of living water yes. be released rivers of living oh, water oh my god out of open your belly it. rivers of open flow. the well out of your belly open rivers of flow come those on that thirst open shall be filled. it those yeah. that hunger shall be filled be full of the Holy Ghost be full of the Holy Ghost come rivers on. of living water fire. in Jesus name fire, fire. Come on, fire! The Holy Ghost. Fresh Fill wind! Us, God. Fresh Fill anointing! Us, God. Oh, Fresh wind! Yes! Open your mouth and begin to release rivers of living water. There's a well opening. Yes! Open your mouth. Release it now. Come on! Mark them, God. Mark them with your anointing. Mark them with your presence. Mark them now, God. Come on, begin to speak out. Begin to pray out in your heavenly language. Begin to pray out in your heavenly language. Open up your mouth. Let the rivers of living water flow out of your mouth. Let the rivers of living water flow out of your mouth. Fresh baptism. Some of you have been taught that this is not from God. Come on, come on. But it is from God, yes, God. and it's for you. I break that spirit of religion off of you now, and I command you. Come on, open your mouth and release it. Wow. Somebody's getting free from religion and tradition. Come on. Somebody's getting free from religion and tradition now. Break it. Jesus' name. Come on. You've been told it's not it's not from God. No, it is from God. He's equipping you. He's equipping you. Wow, do you hear that? Come on, release it. He's unlocking wells. He's unlocking deep wells. These are deep wells of revival. You're going to open your mouth and you will not be silenced by religion. You will not be silenced by tradition. You will not be silenced by the rejection of your family. You're going to stand up with boldness. I release boldness now. If you want boldness, receive it now. Who wants boldness? Boldness. I release boldness now. Boldness. Boldness now to roar. Roar. Come on, no release fear. that roar from your belly. No fear. Release that roar she from your ba, belly. Ba, 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 ba. Come on, release that roar she from your belly. Be activated. Hallelujah. Signs, miracles, Hallelujah. wonders, healing. Signs, Hallelujah. miracles, wonder, healing, deliverance. Come on, Hallelujah. let's hear the let's hear the roar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Come on, be filled. Be filled. Be filled to overflowing. Come on, encounter him. Come on, don't miss your moment. <laughs> Come on. Holy Ghost, have your way. Yeah, that's it. Release it. Come on, that's it. <laughs> Come on. Come on, release it. Come on, be bold. Rivers of living water flow in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. We're receiving the gift of the Spirit. Mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. That's come it. On, come on. Warriors. Yes, come on. Prodigals are coming home in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. Prodigals are coming home in Jesus' name. That's it. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, guys, I want to do something. Keep this atmosphere. We're still praying for people. There's still more. Now listen, I need you to understand the kind of person that Isaiah is, he would stay here for six hours and meet every single one of you. We know this. Here's the thing. He's coming back to New York. We don't know when, but he knows he's coming because he's a demon slayer and he has to. It's like you're... He's got a flight to catch here in a few. Matter of fact, he stayed overtime and he's scaring me a little bit. And we need like a demon slayer jet <laughs> or something, but he's scaring me right now because like he was down in the trenches. So I need you to know 
He was a tremendous blessing to V1 Church today. Tremendous blessing. So I want to honor this man of God, our global online family. I know you guys know him. Such an incredible thing that God has done in and through his life. How many of you know it's just the beginning? From glory to glory.